Welcome to the show, Natalie, and thank you for joining me. Thank you so much for having me here. It's such a pleasure to be here. Now, I am so excited about the deep dive that we're going to do today because in addition to being an epic women's empowerment coach and really offering so much wealth and value, you're also my soul sister. So that means we can kind of go places that people I know a little less well, you know, I might hedge away from. So um, I'm yeah. super excited about what we get to share with our beautiful tribe today. Um, first question, though, off the bat is what is your spirit animal and why? Um, my spirit animal, animal is a gray female puma. Um, yeah, she's a very powerful creature, and she's my spirit animal because she came to me in a dream, mm -hmm. and she showed me a few different aspects of myself, and she taught me about, she taught me and teaches me about leadership, mm -hmm. about being patient and um, really measured in her actions. Nice. Mm -hmm. Patient leadership. Yeah. Mm. That's kind of where we're going to go a little bit today, so yeah. I'm stoked that you mentioned that. Now, out of the gypsy, the goddess, and the queen, you know, and we've had this conversation many times about the various different ways that we as women get to feel fully embodied and whole, um, which one is your personal strong suit? Like, you're, I'm comfortable there. I've always kind of inhabited that. It just feels innate and natural for me. So... I would say that the gypsy has been my, my easiest to identify with mm -hmm. and that I'm currently in a transition. Mm. I'm really shifting out of that and into, mm, let's see, I'd say gypsy has, has primarily been, and then goddess over the past few years has mm -hmm. been guiding me and leading me, and now I'm being called through that into queen. Yes. So it's been, it's been like a very distinct and... Mm, edgy growing experience to shift through those and I love that you said that because the other thing about that is it is one very much a growth expansion into all parts but two it's fluid yeah so at different times in our life we're very often called in and the edges is perfect because that's really what we're doing is expanding ourselves not reconnecting or re um like diving into elements of ourselves and right. you know it really is about well I am this and where else can I become more right. of myself yeah. and so you know you're saying gypsy was very much your strong suit mm -hmm. you work in women's empowerment yeah. so how did you get to be a women's empowerment coach like tell us the story of Natalie as it as it drives you in that direction yeah why is this your work yeah uh, in my younger years, starting from a pretty young age, I started to, to want to control things. I was feeling really out of control. There was a lot of chaos in my family. And I started to do that through controlling my body. And that really came also with um, a lot of social you know, messaging, media messaging about that. And it really took me to a place of disconnecting from myself and my body into this control state. And then as years passed... I had some really big challenges come through. My mom got sick and almost died. I um, had this really big kind of opening, awakening. And through that, I learned to let go, to, mm. face, to face death, to embrace life, and to surrender and let go. And that also brought me back in touch with my body, which brought me back to my, to my femininity mm. and into womanhood. And I really didn't have that modeled for me very much in my life. And so for me, as I was moving through these phases of like realizing how much I was controlling and denying my own physical body, which to me is the physical body is woman, it is feminine, um, the earth, you know, it's, it's the material here. Mm -hmm. And as I was moving through that, that growth and reclaiming of that, I had to seek out women and support and... Um, you know, people who could mentor me and guide me and show me a different way. And it, it was also a reclaiming of myself on every level, my self-worth, my own personal power, my personal responsibility that brought my power back to me. Um, and that's been such a long and beautiful journey that's brought me to an experience of deep connection and fulfillment that I wish for every woman to experience in her own way, but to, you know, to the greatest capacity that she can in her, in her life here. 
And so hence the reason you are now essentially someone who guides women through that process. Exactly. Is that the full circle? Exactly. Yes, I yeah. love that. And, you know, listening to your story, I feel that it's one that so many of us can share. And, you know, there are similarities. Obviously, everybody has their unique elements. But you talked about the need for security and control, mm-hmm. and particularly in relationship to your body. And I think this is, at this time in our history, mm-hmm. um, perhaps more than ever, we're more aware than ever that there are all these external factors, and yet we're also more trapped in the process of it. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's more talk about it, and yet everyday women are still feeling like, right. well, who do I need to look like to be perceived as beautiful, exactly. or what's wrong with my body? And and so when you talk about, you know, that initially that control was around your body, is did that show up as in anxiety? Was that eating disorders? Like it, it's just to be able to call in our audience so they can connect with what does that mean and how did it look like so they can maybe say, ah, I'm, I too am actually experiencing a need for security and control. Yeah. Um, so it started with um, wanting to lose weight and wanting to really have a perfect body mm. and And really looking, at the time, I wouldn't have said it was perfectionism or that I was trying to have a perfect body. But when I look back, that's exactly what I was doing. I was Mm -hmm. looking at airbrushed models in magazines and on the media and thinking that I should look like them or that I had to look like them in order to be loved, Mm -hmm. in order to be successful, um, in order to be, you know, to have a sense of belonging and validation. Mm -hmm. Um, so So it looked like me starting to skip meals and throw away food and calorie count and restrict and then it also became um, because I'm naturally an athlete it became over exercising Mm -hmm. so it was the combination of not eating very much really not nourishing my body and not listening to my body and then exercising really hard for hours a day yeah, so over-exercising and restricting calories. Yeah. Um, thank you for sharing that mm-hmm. because sometimes when we, we use those bigger words, it's almost like we can't connect to what that looks like. And, yeah. and you know, for some people it might be calorie restriction or going without meals. And, and if that's an intuitive experience because of not needing food, fine. But if mm-hmm. it is because um, you're feeling like, yeah, if, if I do this, then my body right. will um, – adhere to my requirements so that I can fit the mold and so you used a beautiful word and I know it's a beautiful an important one for you nourished so when we move from that model Mm -hmm. of trying to control yeah and coming from a space of fear into one of nourishment like what is the difference how does it look and feel different for the women out there because what if they go well I do like exercising and I don't want my weight to get out of control Mm -hmm. like there's a fine line correct I mean you know some women it's like I I get that there's a pressure but can you speak to that yeah so it's really a matter of where you're coming from Mm -hmm. like you were saying am I moving from a fear Am I deciding to exercise or eat this way because I'm afraid that if I don't, you know, I won't get love or because I'm not enough? Um, And, you know, at the time, I thought that I was just being really healthy. Like I kind of, I, you know, did this mental trick where I was like, I'm being very healthy. It wasn't healthy. I didn't actually even understand what health was. I was really just equating looking a certain way with health. Mm -hmm. And as I learned later in my life when my hormones really crashed and my body really couldn't sustain what I was doing anymore, that wasn't healthy. And and in fact, it really like, you know, Mm. hurt my body. Absolutely. Um, But I think that coming back around to the foundation of where I'm moving from Am I moving from love? Am I moving from a place of, you know what, no matter what happens, I'm okay, I'm enough, as I am right in this moment. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm good right now. From that place, I can still say, oh, and maybe I want to work out and get stronger, Mm -hmm. or maybe I want to shift my diet a little bit to Mm -hmm. really um, be leaner or whatever. Mm -hmm. But coming from that place of, at the end of the day, my self-worth isn't riding on those results. Mm. And I'm not going to sacrifice my health to get that outcome because that the outcome inherently needs love and health mm. and acceptance, mm. right? Um, I think that there's this, this challenge that's happening for women where we think, when I get the body, then I can love myself. Yeah. When I get the body, then I can feel that sense of being okay. Mm-hmm. But if you're not loving yourself, if you're hating on yourself the whole way through, 
you're only training yourself to not love yourself. And as someone who's gotten there and had the body and wasn't happy, Mm -hmm. didn't feel worthy still, I can say it doesn't work. (laughs) A hundred percent. And and actually we were even talking about this in a different context yesterday and this when I'll, um, which is a delayed experience of contentment. And, and you know, if body issues are not your thing, you might be running the same pattern around money. When I have, you know, enough money in the bank or you might be running it, you know, about um, when I have the relationship, then I'll be able to relax and, you know, enjoy my life because I'll have someone to share it with. Mm -hmm. It's always like these markers put out there instead of this internal like wholeness you know which is essentially what you know the gypsy goddess queen and what you do in your work we're all we're all doing as light work is the same thing trying to remind each of us that the wholeness that everything that we need needs to be within as opposed to externally and so back to when you were sharing earlier you know you talked about um needing the control and security and then finally surrendering Mm -hmm. which is one of my favorite words it was literally a mantra i wore on my wrist for about 18 Mm -hmm. months after my divorce um because yeah i was an absolute control junkie Mm -hmm. before that and so so often you know i think one of the things that i really want to help my tribe with and because it's important for me too is there's a lot of theory. We talk a lot of theory, you know, and we can understand how we work and we can understand why we might feel like that. But when we actually talk about surrender, the word rolls off the tongue. The experience, however, hella girl, that can be hard. Am I right? Am I right? Like it can, it can, particularly if you run, powerlessness is your number one driving, you know, quote unquote fear. It's coded as unsurvivable to be in the surrender of control like to give control out and so I want to know like if if you've come from that space what are the words of advice or what what light could you shed for the people who are like I hear you but I just can cannot like I mean I have clients and I know you do too who literally like tell their husbands how to take the rubbish out Mm -hmm. you know and and he's like I can do it and she's like yeah but do it my way and and it's an experience of control and they know it's crazy they know it but it's how. How mm-hmm. do they open up their hands and just release yeah. and trust and all yeah. of this? Yeah. Can you speak to that? Yeah. I think that, that there are a lot of different ways to come at it. Like, there are a lot of different answers here. So there's no one way. Um, one of the things that I found really helpful in my journey and with my clients is to start to ask the question of, what am I surrendering to? Mm. Because if you don't know what you're letting go into... It can be a pretty difficult thing to let go because, like, oh, shit, is that going to be okay when I let go? So that question, first of all, it feels foundational. I think that's actually, like, that sounds so simple and yet is absolutely essential because you're quite right. The thing about the surrendering is it's a safety mechanism. And you're you're quite right. Like, who's to say that where you are surrendering is a safe place? Right. So that assessment first, like, is it in my best interest? And if yeah. it is, then what? Like, so so if, let's take a really minor thing, like, like how your partner chooses to do things over the way you might want it done. Mm-hmm. Or um, letting go of the idea of losing weight and, and just allowing yourself to to potentially, if you didn't exercise and you modified your food, my goodness, gain weight. Like, just the little things in life, which don't feel so little. Right. So if we're like, well, I realize I'm not going to die and it's kind of safe to surrender to that. Yeah. How do we step into the being of the surrender? How did you do it? Yeah. So first I understood what I was surrendering to. And then I started to recognize what outcomes I was grasping. And then I would I would kind of work my way backwards to, well, why am I grasping that outcome? What, what do I really believe? And really working with those beliefs of, well, do I believe that if I don't, if my body doesn't look this certain way, that I'm really not going to be successful, right? Mm-hmm. Um, or I won't I, find my partner or, or whatever the ripple effect is. Or I won't make money or mm-hmm. I just won't be happy, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? And so I started to work backward with those beliefs and look around for examples and really, once I started looking around, like I could see around me that, that I knew other women who were struggling with their bodies the way I was, and they weren't happy, mm. you know, or that they were achieving those outcomes and still not happy. And so I started just kind of like work with my own psychology and my own beliefs and even proving, like creating new eyes, right? Yes. Because yes. when we shift our belief, we start to perceive and see different things than we did before. Mm. So when my eyes, when my perception said that, only only people with this body and this this look are happy then i would look 
seek that out and look for that, yeah. right? And I'd notice it all the time. Particular I, activating systems are seeking out to see what you already believe. Exactly, yeah. right? 100%. And, and so once I took that, those glasses off and I started to see through a different lens, I could see the broad spectrum of what, you know, what really makes a fulfilled, happy person? What mm. does make a really mm. fulfilling relationship? Mm. Um, and I started to notice that it was really a sense of self-worth and self-love. Like that's, you know, you hear it, mm. but once you really like let it sink in and feel it within yourself. And so then I started to notice where I was gripping and to me, inside my body and in my energy field, I can feel it like a gripping. And I started to practice to breathe and relax, like literally shift into my back body, shift down and back. And I would even like let my hands go. Just mm-hmm. moment, you know, little moments mm-hmm. in the day of just like, okay, mm-hmm. just let it, mm-hmm. let my body open, let my, my cells relax, let me, myself breathe a little bit more. That's beautiful. So I feel like what you're really, you know, to sum that up as an actionable, it's self-inquiry first. So it's mm-hmm. like, what what are the beliefs? Yeah. Like, why am I? So the, the physical awareness, I'm feeling it. Why am I feeling it? What am yeah. I making the meaning of? Oh, well, if I gain weight, I'll never find the perfect man. Or if I gain weight, the career won't come. Mm-hmm. Or if he takes the rubbish out, he's not respecting me. So right. it's actually not about the rubbish. It's about the fact that you feel unseen and unrecognized. So if we do that deep dive, we can get clarity. And then I love that. I love that phrase you just said. It's new eyes. Mm -hmm. Because we do. We we work within our frame, right? So if we can shift and broaden our frame or or take a whole new perspective, you know, one of Marianne Williamson's quotes that is like my absolute favorite is she says... um, a miracle is merely a shift in perspective, mm. which is just like, let that land. Oh, right? It's just the everything. Yeah. And I know that you and I sit in the work where this is absolutely the case. Yeah. Our past stories are purely a fixed perspective. And when we take a different angle, we come around and we sit on the other side of that, we can see it potentially for what it really is or just a whole other way because what is truth? Right. And so I love that you're saying taking a different perspective and it really gives you that opportunity to say, is that true? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. is that true? Exactly. Love, love, love that. Thank you, Nat. And, and on that, I want to say that sometimes it's it's pretty necessary or just really helpful to get someone's help on that piece. You know, like just ask for help because mm-hmm. we so we sometimes really struggle to see our own blind spots. And when we're in a certain belief or a certain um, construct of ideas and beliefs and perceptions, we're in it. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes we can. It's really difficult to step out and actually see the reality of the possibilities and what else is out there. I, uh, it's like you knew the segue I wanted and you gave me the perfect <laughs> like hole in. So 100% and the, you know this is something as someone, you know I've owned it very openly that I used to have the issue of powerlessness. Asking mm-hmm. for help was like, uh, it hurt. Yeah. It actually hurt. And um, and yet it's it's also been the greatest gift for me to access my own awakening. And one of the things I love most about you, and I wanted to talk about this holding space. So I am a coach and I can coach myself through it. And you've seen me do that mm-hmm. where I'm like, oh, I'm having this thought. I'm making it mean this. Why am I doing that? Is that true? And I can literally climb the ladder back out of the shadow and into the light. Yeah. And yet I've also been with you where I've just said, I'm struggling and you just held space. That's probably the thing that I think is your superpower, to be mm-hmm. honest. I've not actually ever said that to you, but you have a, such a delicious capacity to hold space. Just allow it. You kind of allow me to run around like that cat caught in a corner mm-hmm. and then drop me into my body and then you let me kind of pull my way out. And it's so graceful the way you do it because you are giving the lifelines, but you don't look like the lifesaver. Mm-hmm. And and that's the real gift in coaching. So I... Okay. I can mm-hmm. see that in you, and I thank you for that mm-hmm. that gift. And it's it literally, I just got chills. It's, you know that you know the times you've helped me even recently with that, and so I'm I'm happy to even dive a little into that. Particularly yeah. one of the topics that we we delved into that was in relationship to myself. Um, and I, you know, this is not a conversation about me. I'm only sharing this because I equally know that I am a mirror for my entire tribe. Absolutely. So if I have had this experience and aha, it's going to be beneficial. So let's just yeah. go there. We were talking recently, I've been through a breakup and dropping into, you know, what am I really feeling and what do I really want? And I I noticed that I couldn't even almost get clear on what I wanted because I was still running it through the filter of 
their needs and their needs and their mm-hmm. needs and these these pre- pr- parameters. Mm-hmm. And even though those parameters were technically removed, it's like um, you know that that metaphor of the fleas caught in the jar. Mm-hmm. They hit the top of the jar and you take the lid off eventually, but they don't come out because they just feel like the limits are still there. Right. So good question for the audience: Where in your life have you got a perceived limit that's not really there? Sidetrack. We'll get back to this point. Yeah. You <laughs> raised a really valuable point to me. You helped me really dive down into. Well, what if none of those were there and then you could have everything you want and there was still this like <gasps> came up, you know, like if I got the thing that I've been saying I wanted this, <gasps> this catch of breath, you know, if you're not watching this on the video, I want to make sure you're understanding what that little sucking in sound is, that catch of breath, that kind of constriction. Yeah. And you guided me into an awareness around, you know, through our conversation and asking really good questions and then also me allowing the truth to surface is that it wasn't around the outcome but rather my self-trust in myself to make sure I don't lose myself again Mm -hmm. to the catering for or the meeting the needs or the upholding the pre-existing parameters of myself and you know the situation and um, and I just think that there's so much in that and we talked about boundaries and I feel like you are you really shed some light on that for me mm-hmm. personally, so I would love for you to, to just touch on that for us. Like, how do you see this with your clients? Yeah. Where is boundaries and self trust really a major cornerstone and a, a big factor in this ability to know self worth and to hold love within self? Yeah. Mm. Boundaries, I'm really passionate about boundaries I know because you it's are. been a hard learned lesson for me, and so it's an embodied understanding that has, you know, really come through. Um, my tedious practice, <laughs> practice, practice and participation <laughs> in the boundaries. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I'm really passionate about it because I feel like collectively as women, boundaries are, are a big edge for us that we are really needing to embrace and nail. <laughs> like we need to get solid in our boundaries mm-hmm. to shift the consciousness and to shift the the relationship between men and women and women and work and women and motherhood. Mm-hmm. Um, as women, we have, most of us, inherited some story, either collectively, culturally, or in our families, or all three, of being the giver and the mm-hmm. nurturer. Mm-hmm. And giving, 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 um, in order to have a sense of belonging, have a sense of connection, to show love or to receive love. Mm-hmm. And so what we've, we've kind of deeply, subtly learned is that if we don't give, 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 we're actually just not going to be okay. We're not going to get our needs met for love and belonging and connection. Mm-hmm. On top of that, we often are coming from a place of not, not really feeling whole and not that um, strong sense of self-worth. And so we're giving, giving, giving to try and get love, to get validated. Mm. And in that, we're not holding boundaries. Um, instead, we're overgiving at our own expense. And that is, is harming us individually and collectively, is what I see, and it's harming the earth. Um, I see that, the symptoms of that everywhere. Mm. So boundaries are beautiful because they are an opportunity for us to, first of all, drop in and know our own needs, Mm. to be connected enough to know our needs, Mm. to really listen, sometimes even to that quiet, subtle voice that says, I don't want that. I don't like that. That's not for me. That's not quite right for me. Mm. To listen to it, name it, and then to speak the boundary to establish the boundary through words and actions Mm. and to have that courage to say no Mm. oh yes or yes Yes. yeah Yeah. but but essentially according to the boundary and this was the thing that I had the big aha on like I recently had done work to realize that coded in my DNA you know or in my mindset Mm. DNA was that to say yes is to love Mm. You know, yeah. yes, you want the food. Yes, you want yeah. the activity. Yes, you want to try that. Of course, let me support you. Let me give you all the yeses. And to say no was literally to withhold love. I had that coded. Yeah. So you can just see, and some of you might have that coded who are listening in today, like extend that out into the ripple effect. You know, even as a parent, like if you have an inability to say no to certain things, that is not actually an act of love. In fact, saying no can be the highest act of love. Right. But it was just miscoded in my system. Mm-hmm. And then I also had a belief that 
if I was to um, make requests and I'm using my quotation fingers or to to kind of say I need it to be like this then then I was putting on someone a parameter that was felt transactional you know to me like I need it like this and if you can't do it like this then we can't be friends and I'm you know I'm I'm a huge proponent Mm -hmm. of unconditional love and, and everything but I was missing the piece and this is what you just spoke to that in not having the boundaries the person who was kind of not getting any yeses, if you will, and 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 not kind of getting any of the um, nurturing from the support was me. Because when push came to shove, if something I wanted matched up against someone else's wants, I would have done it because of these pre-existing rules that you say yes to the people that you love. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But I wasn't saying yes to my needs because I should be the person that I love the most. Right. Right. And what happens when we do that is that we're actually giving a false sense of ourselves to the people that we love mm. most, right? Or for the people just in general. Mm. Because our true self knows what we need and will speak it and mm. honor it for ourselves, right? Mm. But when we start saying yes when we mean no, then we're giving, we're people pleasing. Mm. Essentially, appeasing, yeah, right? appeasing. And so we're, we're giving people a false sense of ourselves that, well, I'm this person that's easy in this way or that wants that thing or is okay mm. with this. And so then that person is interacting with an idea of us while our true self behind there Mm. is actually suffering, Mm. um, is is feeling maybe sometimes resentful, Mm. is hurt. um, We're losing self-respect in that process. Well, the thing I realized that I was losing was self-trust. Yeah. Because the other, and I think that, you know, it's not always as like black and white, is it? Like, I don't want to do something and I did it anyway. Because truth be told, I do take care of my needs. Yeah. But... But the catch was um, there's a part of me that loves to do it for them mm-hmm. and there was still needs not being met. Yes. And it was kind of like when it came to one or the other, I noticed that I was always putting my needs. I didn't trust myself to make sure that all my needs were met. Yeah. And I think that's the biggest thing. And, and I think that's actually a huge part of the self-love equation. Yeah. You know, like if you cannot trust yourself to take care of your needs, well, you're automatically in deep by default externally wired for any potentiality of feeling sated yeah big problem big problem big problem right there (laughs) because the thing is is that most people out there they're kind of struggling to handle their own stuff right you know well (laughs) and speak their own truth and even know their own truth so what are some practices let's see if we can pull up some tangibles yeah you know for for our listeners about Okay, so I want to build self-trust. Like, how do we do that? What are the what are the steps to build self-trust so that we can meet our needs, so that we can feel whole and complete, so that we can experience self-love? Yeah. So where do we start? I think the for me, it really starts with even being able to arrive and land in our body, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. Embodiment. This is coming back to ourselves enough that I can feel the sensations in my body and I can hear the communication of my body. And the, the body communicates through sensation, which sometimes looks like symptoms, and that's pain, pleasure, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's step one to me, because mm-hmm. the body is so wise. So wise. And she's obviously so necessary for life, mm-hmm. and if we're denying her, we are denying ourselves. Yes. Right? So to, to listen to the body, so would that be, would you suggest a daily practice of sitting and just questioning, is, or is it just checking in? Like, give the action. Like, yeah. what's the action? Or just, uh, so obviously, there's many ways. Yeah, I think there are, there are, yeah, definitely many ways. One of the ones that I love and have worked with the most is is just sitting. Mm. Sitting still or lying down somewhere comfortable, closing my eyes, and then just actually noticing sensations and naming them throughout mm. my body. So that would be like, I'd kind of start head to toe and I'd feel, okay, I feel the hair touching my forehead. You know, and then I'll drop down a little bit further. Okay, I feel a little tension in the left side of my jaw. Maybe mm-hmm. drop down a little further. I'm like, oh, I feel some heat on the back of my neck. Mm-hmm. You know, these are the words of sensation. Mm-hmm. They're hot, cold, mm-hmm. tight, tingly, um, and really start to connect with that to mm-hmm. know that I'm in my body and I can feel. Mm. And then after that physical awareness or that calling out what is, what's present in your physical being, um, do you ever like to kind of drop into that energetic? Like I can feel, because um, I know for me it's like the, well, you know, I think it's Carolyn Miss who says that the, the body is the barometer for mm-hmm. the, the soul, right? Yeah. Like it really does. It's a read. It's a way in. Yeah. And so for me it's like, oh, I'm noticing like 
you know, clenching in my gut or tightness in my chest. So it's a physical noticing, and then I say, and the feeling there is, and then I just mm-hmm. name it. Yeah. And I may have no one, no awareness as to why, but it might be sadness. Right. Oh, okay, what am I sad about? Mm-hmm. And so then we dive in, and we mm-hmm. just get curious. Yeah. And even, I love what you were saying before about that sensation, that naming it, like not trying to fix it. Right. Just as it is, there is. Irrit- like I'm scratchy on my chest. I'm, mm-hmm. My back is sore. Mm-hmm. Not like, oh, what is that? You know, then go straight to the conversation about, oh, I was from, you know, weightlifting yesterday, blah, blah, right. blah, blah, blah. And how do I make it better? Yeah. <laughs> mm. Okay, so yeah. body awareness. And, you know, what else What else can we do for self-trust? I'm, I'm feeling like it's almost like starting small mm-hmm. with little ways to go, okay, what are my needs? And then making sure you meet them. But yeah. what do you think? yeah. I built a lot of self-trust through learning to care for my body. Mm -hmm. Like, that's really how I foundationally started. Do I drink water when my body is thirsty? Mm. Um, Can I I make choices around food that feels good? And I want to, you know, really say that that was coming from the place of self-love to build that trust, not from the place of... Um, oh, I have to get this right so mm-hmm. that I can be this perfect person. And if I don't get it right, I'm going to judge myself all day mm-hmm. long. Like, nope, I'm just quieting that story. Mm-hmm. And instead, just being in that inquiry. Of, yeah. Oh, I noticed I'm, I'm, I'm thirsty or haven't, you know, haven't afforded it. Do I then go drink water or do I get distracted and mm. put something else as a priority above my own basic self-care? Yes. Beautiful. And the thing is, is that could also look like, um, you know, we're talking a lot at the moment about the physical body. But if if money is your thing and you're constantly without money, for instance, Mm -hmm. and then, you know, people are like, oh, well, let's go out to dinner. And you're kind of like, well, I'm trying to save for this thing that's important to me. But you go out to dinner anyway because you don't want to miss out. Like, I'm just trying to paint other stories for those of you who are listening who maybe Mm -hmm. maybe are like, well, you know, I'm good with drinking water. Like, it's not about the water. You're getting that. So it might be like, well, I need to just go, well, these are my needs. And at the moment, my commitment sits with this. Yeah. And so above all else, I will stay committed to my commitment. Right. Yeah, which means I'm going to say no to dinner. You can come over. We can eat leftovers. And. Yeah. And at this point, I work with a lot of entrepreneurs. I work with female entrepreneurs Mm -hmm. to shift out of, you know, stress and anxiety and into a place of working in the process with ease, Mm -hmm. in that grace, in that nourishment, and to achieve you know, these really big goals. These are ambitious Mm. women. Mm -hmm. And what I see coming up is that sometimes it's needs and it's, it's, they're really needing to find out what those needs are. And sometimes that's slowing down. Mm -hmm. That's just creating space to feel. Mm -hmm. Um, Sometimes that's, that's also really naming and getting, getting clear on your values which are, you know, very interconnected with our needs. Absolutely. What do you care about most? Mm -hmm. Is it your relationships? Is it your body? Is it your health? What do you care about most? And then when you look at your daily schedule, when you look at your day-to-day, are your priorities actually in order? Or are you waiting to have the money and the success to then prioritize the things that you actually value? So another thing that I work with on a really tangible level is just checking that out kind of day-to-day. All right, I have a list of my needs and values did I prioritize them today? Mm-hmm. Did I make time to, to have a like drop-in connection with the person that I care about most? Mm. I love that. And, I, you know, I do a lot of work around values too because so often we're climbing the ladder on the wrong building, you know, yeah, as we often say. Exactly. So... So when people do that, so they so let's let's give them this exercise. So guys, maybe what you could do is um, get clear on what are the things that are most important to you. Um, mm-hmm. I, you know, I have um, things around values that people can do. There's lots of ways you can assess your values. But what I think is interesting and important is to assess that they're truly your values and yes. not just the values that have been placed on you Absolutely. through family or society. Well, I should value wealth. Maybe you just don't, mm-hmm. you know, and maybe you don't value security like the person next door. Maybe you mm-hmm. value freedom mm-hmm. and and you know you need a certain level, but, but you know, maybe, you, you know, this is where when we work with people who are, um, you know, flogging it at work and flogging it at work and are miserable, it's because ultimately they want to be at home with their kids. Right. You know, like the, the working man, for instance, you know, going to provide. Yeah. Um, and so if we were to write down what we did in a day, yeah. right, Every, the everything, mm-hmm. would, we, would you then suggest that we go, well, Okay, almost like why did I, almost like an inquiry or an assessment of why did I do that? Exactly. Is it was it a, was it a meeting my need or a meeting a want of mine? Because needs and wants is a whole other mm-hmm. conversation, right? Right. 
Um, or was it an obligation? Or was it an obligation? And is it one I did with a joyful heart because it also, in the longer, like it's a, a slightly distance, but maybe it meets my needs in mm-hmm. some way. Um, and let's say someone does this inquiry. They write it down and they, it comes up that actually, holy moly, the reason I am feeling so deflated, so unenergetic, so lacking in motivation, generally just sad, Mm -hmm. is because actually when I do this assessment, so much of my day is not about my wants or needs being met at all. So then when you have that, I don't want you to suddenly be miserable. So what should they do about that? It's almost an exciting thing, right? I'm I'm feeling like, wow, what an opportunity we now have before us. But can you speak to that? What would we do from then? Not like if, if we check in and we're like, oh, the penny drops. Yeah. So that's the time to really claim back the power of your intention, attention, and energy, and then just start to shift where you're putting your attention, you know? And that is also the place where sometimes that requires that you speak the boundary and Mm. you speak that this is not resonant, this isn't right for me. You adjust expectations with other people so that you can actually put your attention and engage where it's most fulfilling to Mm. you where it's actually right for you, Mm. right? So on a really practical level, there is that moment that you can practice in the day where you're about to say yes to something and you pause, you slow down, and you say, am I saying yes for me or am I saying yes for them? Mm. And another another strategy that I learned over the years is this, this, if we can let go of the need to respond instantly. You know, so for me, sometimes I now, because I know my pattern, not Mm -hmm. because I'm, you know, suddenly wise or like really kick ass, but because I know my pattern of, Mm -hmm. um, I know that I'll say yes more than I should. So now I almost have like a personal rule of, unless it's like a soul screeching, yes, I really want to do that. I'm so thrilled you asked Mm -hmm. me. Then I'm actually going to say, hey, let me just check my diary and I'll get back to you. And in that process, I actually stop and go, do I want to do this? Is this in alignment? And let, let's also speak to the fact that sometimes we don't want to do things that are actually in our highest good and in alignment. So that's another side of the conversation, right? Yeah. Because there's fear there, potentially potentially looking like you're failing or looking mm-hmm. like you can't do it or looking, you know, or even that experience of the unknown. But the growth through that will ascend you. So yeah. what about it? And, you know, I'm feeling like the word that's really coming through for me right now is like, all of this boundary work and all of this self-trust and kind of establishing the, you, the need, meeting of your needs is really, yeah. it's a practice of courage and bravery, isn't it? it because absolutely Because is. there are going to be times where you, your need to really own what you want is in conflict with another need absolutely. of belonging, mm-hmm. but you know that you really need to speak your truth. So how do we speak to this conversation piece? I actually think that's an illusion also. Please. Because... You feel you might feel sometimes like if I say no, I'm going to disappoint or upset these other people mm-hmm. and that then I'm going to lose connection mm-hmm. and I'm going to lose that sense of belonging. That might be true on like a short term, mm-hmm. you know, in the moment. But ultimately, when you are true to yourself, you are revealing yourself. You know, mm-hmm. when you honor your own needs and desires and values and you're living in alignment with yourself, you're allowing other people to see the real you and your connections will be more authentic. And richer. And richer. I think that's such a valid point now because essentially if you're not showing up as you, then they can't connect with you. That's what exactly. you're saying. They're connecting with that image or a hologram of you. Exactly. And you're not even connecting with you. So ironically, not only are you potentially running the issue of being quote unquote abandoned right. by the tribe, you've already abandoned yourself yes. anyway. So yeah. <laughs> you've just literally coming from fear leads to the fear. I say this all yeah, the time. Absolutely. So when we come from the fear of being abandoned, the act that we take out of that space will lead to the self abandonment, which is the mirror and the hologram in and of itself. Yeah. And so I want to offer this really yeah, also please. a simple, you know, practical thing that you can do in your day to day is that coming back to the body, if you're in a moment and you don't know whether it's a yes or no, and you're a little bit confused about what's driving you because you're in this process of learning to, to understand those things and you're in that process of learning discernment, you can come back to your body and your body will tell you. If it's a no, you'll feel a constriction somewhere in your body you'll Mm. feel it Mm. and if it's a yes you'll feel an opening you'll Mm -hmm. feel a relaxing and um i'm so glad you said that because the body is wise yeah yeah the mind is the the thing the matrix we sometimes need to sift through right to get to the gold so um and i know that i teach a lot of like just muscle muscle work you know whether your body becomes your compass or whether or not you're doing muscle work because 
oddly, we feel like we can trust that because it feels right. like an external read, mm-hmm. but actually it's like this internal compass guiding you. Right. And Such a valid point. As women, we have the vagina. Mm. Highly sensitive, highly tapped in, mm-hmm. a lot of muscles, and they will tell you yes mm-hmm. or no. Our, our vagina is very wired into our cortisol, and what brings up stress will create a little contraction, mm. and you'll feel that. So listen to So listen to, to the compass of your vagina. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> so, so good. All right, so let's let's talk more about this femininity piece. You work with women. Mm-hmm. I want to know, like, in your experience, what are, like, just the top three things that you feel women are really dealing with at the moment? Like, what's the thing that they're coming and saying, I really want? Yeah. Right now, I'm hearing that women really want to feel filled up mm-hmm. versus this experience of kind of wired and tired and mm-hmm. overgiving mm-hmm. and never enough, right? Women want to feel filled up. They want to feel more relaxed and connected, like mm-hmm. spacious. Mm-hmm. And they want to feel empowered. They mm-hmm. want to feel powerful in themselves where their power is not tied to something external anymore. Mm-hmm. I love that. And so we've already, I feel, touched on many things that would obviously embody that. Boundaries, yeah. dropping in, mm-hmm. breath work, daily kind of being with. Yeah. Are there any other things that would maybe, that you're like, okay, there's one other piece that, that kind of would speak to how you help women or the conversation you have to have to have them have those three things? Yeah, I would say that another really big piece is to claim responsibility for your experience. Mm -hmm. And that any time we deny that responsibility and we put the blame, we point the finger, even if someone else did something that was very harmful or hurtful or, you know, if we're putting it fully outside of ourselves, we are losing power. We are handing our power over to that person. Mm -hmm. And it's time that we claim that responsibility back And in every moment, we really ask ourselves, how did I create this experience for myself? Mm -hmm. How did I participate in this? Mm -hmm. You know, how can I grow and claim my power in Mm -hmm. being responsible and being a creative? And um, absolutely. Co-creation. I mean, everything is a co-creation and we are we are part of that. You know, the old saying is it takes two to tango. Right. Or it takes many. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So. And in doing that, you're right, we do claim back our power. And I think it also means sometimes we get to sit face to face with the, and again, quotation marks, ugly mm-hmm. side of our truth. And when we're, when we're present with that shadow, we can then become unconditionally loving of self, right? Absolutely. Like if we're only just bright and shiny, bright and shiny, and I'll just disown those shadow sides of me, mm-hmm. um, that, that's again, you're only connecting again with a hologram of yourself right. because all parts are present. Mm-hmm. Mm. Love that. Thank you. Yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah, owning and accountability. Okay, so quick fire questions. Nat, when you feel like you need to ignite or expand, you know, reactivate or deepen your gypsy energy, mm-hmm. like your play energy, yeah. what's your go-to? What's your like, number one go-to? I dance. Dancing. Free dancing, wild dancing, get mm-hmm. down, get dirty. Yeah. Okay, love it, <laughs> love it. So moving the body again, yeah. shifting it. Um, free and the freedom of the movement. I love that. Okay. And so what about your goddess energy when you feel cold, like when she's feeling neglected? Mm -hmm. So, and remembering that goddess, not just sensuality, but this receiving piece Mm -hmm. is so big with her and the juiciness of joy and pleasure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I self care. I get into the bathtub. I self massage. I slow down. That's Mm -hmm. how I can get into the receiving. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, slow down. So, so good to create the space. Exactly. Yeah, to be the receptor. Love that. Get into my body. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, body's big for you and me too. Yeah. All right. And then what about queen? Like when you feel like, okay, someone's taken, you've maybe fallen, you've, you've given away or you've let your boundaries get loose and you've somehow found yourself out of alignment with your purpose energy, Mm -hmm. you know, that which knows, that all knowing arrow. Yeah. How do you, what do you do when you're like, oh goodness, I need to resuscitate. We yeah. need queen resuscitation and queen fast resuscitation. right now, <laughs> stat. And so you do what? I get outside. Mm-hmm. I connect with nature. Um, nature to me is both energizing, empowering, but also humbling. Mm-hmm. And I think that's an important part of the queen energy for me is yes. that humble power mm-hmm. um, that's really grounded and connected. Yeah, the mm-hmm. queen is all about co-creation, I agree. And the collective, yeah. ultimately. I she's agree. not actually a matriarch that dominates. She's a matriarch exactly. that is in the best interest. So it's beautiful. It's actually interesting that you go to nature there. Right, because yeah. you connect in with the earth, mm-hmm. and that's part of being, you know, that's part of our domain. It's, yeah, it's part of the our, wisdom. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the wisdom comes through. Exactly. I love that. All right, and so if you were if this if this you know 
audio file slash video file on YouTube mm-hmm. got shrunk down into the next sentence that you're going to share with us, like only. Yeah. But that that sound bite, this message from Nat to perhaps just the women of the world or all of the humans on the world, I don't know. Like yeah. you decide which you want to get into the, the ear of. But it's going to be dropped in, almost like this is your message in the bottle mm-hmm. to the whole world. And this is the only thing you ever get to say to them. I know I'm just building the pressure. <laughs> Can you feel the pressure? What I'm trying to say is like I'm trying to distill it down to what is the thing that you know to be true. Yeah. That you're like, hey, just remember this. Yeah. What would you say and what would you speak into their listening with? Self-love is an act of acceptance. And that dropping into that experience of full acceptance and self-love is what will bring fulfillment, connection, and meaning in this life. Mm-hmm. I, I'm so on board. It's all self-love. Like, it all just comes back to self-love. And it's become this catchphrase, but it's sovereignty. Like, that everything that you're looking for is within. Love what's already there. You don't have to go and do and be and create and and go here, go there, and look after them and look after this and do this and create this and become more magical. You're so magical already. Yes, you are right now. Yeah, you're already magical. Just Mm -hmm. love the crap out of yourself. (laughs) Moment to moment practice. And then, um, you know... We are wrapping up, but I just want to speak to that because, again, tangibles and, and listening to, you know, we can hear that self-love. And so, mm-hmm. you know, and, the, and yet going back to what we started at the top of our talk about we are bombarded. Look like yeah. this. Be like this. Do this. Be epic on every single level. Right. You know, and then maybe, <laughs> so you know. So, like, what do you do to make sure you stay out of that crap? Like, what's it? What, what do, what's your things? Yeah, so first of all, I'm really mindful of what media I put in my brain. Mm -hmm. It is literally brainwashing programming you, Mm -hmm. um, the messages that you hear over and over. So I avoid the the magazines and the advertisements that are going to tell me that I'm not enough. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I make sure that I spend enough time alone that I really have a sense of my own center, my own essence, and my own voice, that I can hear myself through the noise of the world. Oh, so good. Mm-hmm. And then, so I'm, you know, I'm really big on this. Like my rainbow bubble is real yeah. <laughs> and I protect that like a totally. fierce queen. <laughs> and we also want to bring in the wisdom of the wise, right? So yeah. what is maybe one, two, you can, I'm, you know, me, I'm like more is good. You can, you can bring all of the juicy, but like what books would you recommend that our tribe here today that you found either transformational or just like, you're like, this is good. Pick this mm-hmm. up. Do yourself a favor. What's your top picks? Yeah. Women Who Run With the Wolves mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, by Clarissa Pinkola Estes. It's amazing. just amazing, um, timeless stories for all women to understand the archetypes, Gypsy Dog, mm-hmm. Goddess Queen, to understand the archetypes and the different parts of ourselves and how we can bring them all in, activate them, mm-hmm. trust them, connect mm-hmm. with them, and um, integrate. Um, another book that I highly recommend for anyone that kind of struggles with boundaries mm. um, in relationships is um, How to Be an Adult in Relationships by David Rico. Such a great title. I know. <laughs> Are you adult yet? <laughs> Are you adult yeah. in relationships? It's, it's a good question. Mm. I really appreciate that book. There's a lot about it that mm. um, has helped me understand how to engage in a healthier way in mm. relationships. Mm. Yeah. Mm. That sounds like a goodie. Okay, those mm-hmm. two? Yeah, those two. Okay, well yeah. done. All right, and so Nat, like you are all about the empowerment of women. Like we're on the same mission. Yeah. So I want to I want to ask, you know, if we're obviously we're going to link to all your stuff mm-hmm. in the show notes. So you guys, you can you can get in um, to Nat's tribe, and you should. You, I know you have a wealth of knowledge, and not just like the stuff we've talked about today, but mm-hmm. well into nutri- you know nutrition and and in truly um, nurturing of the body and the mind and the soul. Mm-hmm. Um, and so they can head over and, and check you out. But like if they could do a daily action that would really be the ripple effect and the impact of the work that you're here doing on this planet? Like, how do we either embody or how do we share or how do we expand the impact of the work you're doing? Like, just call it out and and call us forward. What do you want us to do? Um, Honor yourself and speak your truth. That's that's really, Boom. That's Mic drop. really it. <laughs> Done. Honor yourself and speak your truth. And so, okay, take that in today. Like, no matter what time of day it is that you're listening to this, no matter who's around, like, before you next speak, before you next say yes or no or interact with any mm-hmm. human, drop in and say, what is my truth? Yeah. And then honor it. 
I mean, really, like, I mean, that's, that's like there, right there is the key to success. Mm -hmm. What is your truth? Speak it and honor it. What is your truth? Speak it and honor it. it. Yeah. And then do the work, right? To expand the capacity of who you are so that your truth can be bigger and brighter and more. Absolutely. Yeah. Nat, as always, you know I adore you. And thank you so much (laughs) for coming on. Um, Guys, as always, if you've got comments, if you had takeaways, put them in. And Nat and I will individually, you know, get to them and respond. If you've got questions, if you're going through stuff, Mm -hmm. you know, a big message today was A, check in with self, sure. Mm -hmm. Don't abdicate. Abdicate? Yeah. Yeah, I said it right. (laughs) Don't abdicate that responsibility out, but call in help. And you, you are definitely one of those people that I feel like I can go to vulnerably. You've mm-hmm. seen me very vulnerable. And I'm just, I personally am so grateful for mm-hmm. that gift to me. But um, but to our tribe, we're here too. And we're real too. And we go through stuff too. So if you've got stuff, bring it forward. Because that's what us sisters do. We take care of each other. Mm-hmm. So again, I love you. I adore you. Mm-hmm. Well, I love you. Thank you so thank much you. for having me. It's so good to see you all. And I look forward to connecting with you. Bye.